Hi, I'm Crystal Hart and welcome to the Crystal Hart Show. Muhammad Ali, the GOAT, greatest of all time boxer, also a celebrated activist. But did you also know that he was a painter and poet and prophet? And his work, his artwork displayed civil rights, religion, he was a humanitarian. Next to me is Rodney Hilton Brown, whose private collection of work, uh, of Muhammad Ali's work, will go on auction at Bonham's Auction Center on October 5th. Now, my first question that I'd like to know is how did you get to know Muhammad Ali on such a personal level to be able to collect all this, all this work? In 1977, I had taken over a failing art gallery and was looking for some famous artists to publish in limited edition uh, prints. And the most famous person in the world, obviously, Muhammad Ali. So I arranged to meet him up in Boston where he was doing an exhibition charity boxing match to raise funds for the Elma Lewis School of Fine Arts, a minority art school up in Boston. And uh, I met him in the dressing room before the fight, told him why I was there. I wanted him to paint some paintings. And I told him that I thought if I could stick a paintbrush in his hands, what would come out of it would be just as brilliant as what he did with his hands in the boxing <laughs> ring. And the rest is history. Well, we're going to take a little tour now, and Rodney will explain a, a little bit more uh, about his artwork and, and what to expect. All, all the artwork and artifacts that are in the Bonham sale are in my newly published book, Muhammad Ali, uh, Painter, Poet, and Prophet. And this is a book about Ali's untold story. Um, and this is his unveiling a painting, which we'll see in a few minutes, in front of the General Assembly of the United Nations. And that's called Let My People Go. But it all goes back to earlier paintings that we did in 1977, 1979, when he was down on um, Natchez, Mississippi, filming Freedom Road. This is Sting Like a Bee. This is Mosque Two, a Guiding Light, and Jet Plane. And they all became limited edition silkscreen prints, which are also on view and on sale here. This group of 10 drawings here was done in 1967 uh, for issue number one of Avant Garde uh, magazine. And uh, you, they're a group of fantastic social justice uh, drawings. Here is an illustration of his trial uh, for refusing to go into uh, the army uh, under the draft. Here's the starving children of Mississippi. Um, here's an earlier mosque. Here's the comparison between uh, Islam and Christianity, him looking at the crowd out of the boxing ring, another boxing ring piece. This shows America as a giant jail, uh, keeping black people in there. Um, and it's just uh, a fantastic, they're all one of a kind uh, pieces. And I found out uh, about their existence and uh, 11 years after these were drawn, I went to uh, Ralph Ginsburg, who was the owner of Avant Garde magazine, and purchased the whole group uh, from him to add to my collection, because it was certainly a, a missing example of his best social justice pieces. This is the magnificent set of four silkscreen prints that were done from the paintings um, that we saw over there. And you can see the, the colors, the size, are magnificent, printed on the finest paper. And because Ali was sitting down at a big table when he signed uh, the prints, these signature specimens are twice the size of an ordinary Ali uh, signature uh, or autograph that you would buy on, on the market. And they're said by experts to be the finest examples of Ali's signature ever done because, as I said, he was relaxed sitting at a big table and the Alzheimer's uh, and the Parkinson's hadn't set in yet, so he still had total control over his hands. This group of paintings here is quite uh, diverse. Um, this drawing here and this painting of the jet plane over there were done as uh, Parkinson's uh, therapy uh, paintings uh, after the Holmes fight. So that puts them in a very unique category. Uh, this one, uh, the, the Tree of Life, 
um, biblical uh, theme was one of those three that were done on the first night that we met up in Boston. Probably the best painting he ever did with, in terms of technical color balance and so forth is the one at the very, very top, um, Eastern Sunrise. I just love that painting. It's just fantastic. I wish it was a little bit lower down so we could see it. Another very interesting painting is the one, I Love You, America. He was over at... Uh, uh, my place on East 64th Street uh, one night, and I said, you know, I know you love this country, but most people don't know and they don't understand that you love uh, America because of the Vietnam draft thing. And I said, I'd like you to paint something that expresses how you love uh, America. And so we did this Jasper Johns type theme painting with the big American flag there, I Love You, America, and the big heart represents the uh, I love New York symbol that was popular um, back at that time. And then he signed and, and dated it in 1979. So it's a, a very singular piece about a, uh, a very important uh, part of him. Now the last painting we're going to look at in this panel is way up at the top. And that's a painting that he did right before the fight with Larry Holmes. And it shows... Uh, him and Larry Holmes in the ring um, with him beating Larry Holmes. Now, unfortunately, the fight didn't uh, turn out that way, um, but I have photographs that are in the book of him painting the painting and then also holding the finished product up after he had finished it with a smile on his face because he was proud of his work. Proud, very proud. This entire wall here is Ali's United Nations um, uh, pieces. And back in the 70s, um, there was a big push by the UN um, against apartheid in South Africa and to free the people of uh, Namibia. But uh, nobody gave a damn about that because Namibia was a country that had no oil, it had no diamonds, had no gold. Just a lot of poor people that wanted to be free. So they couldn't get any traction or attention. So I arranged to bring Ali to the UN, where we met with Secretary General Kurt Walheim and gave a speech before the UN uh, for the freedom of the people of Namibia. And this is the artwork and the poetry that surrounded uh, that event. And this is the original painting that we unveiled in f from the rostrum at the UN. And he had a poem that he composed to go along with the painting. And the poem was, spread the word around the world, Tell both friend and foe, I'm fighting for freedom now, South Africa, so let my people go. And it brought the house down, standing ovation right on the spot. And the United Nations made some limited ed edition prints um, under a program that uh, they had at the time. And these are the limited edition prints over here. Now, they thought I was, uh, that we were too inflammatory uh, with the white man with the whip uh, next to the bars of gold down here. So in the printing of the UN limited edition, they demanded that I either take out the white man with the whip or take out the slogan, let my people go, because they just thought the thing, the two together were too inflammatory. Well, I couldn't take out let my people go because that goes along with the poem and that's the essence uh, of our, our whole um, painting politics and poetry program over at the UN. It was the essence of it. So the final UN print came out with the white man removed from the print. This is from the regular um, UN print edition. However, since it was my printer that was uh, printing uh, the edition for the, for the UN, I was able to get a few artist proofs run off with the white man still in before they erased him and took him out. And uh, Ali and I shared those, those prints, and he gave some to his entourage, and I have a, a, a couple left uh, uh, today. It's, it's a fabulous, fabulous rarity. And these are handwritten uh, peace poems uh, that, he, that he wrote uh, at the time, uh, this one being framed together with the um, uh, We Came in Chains poem, which is just a knockout. Uh, po the finest poem he ever produced. And then in the middle, up top there, 
is what looks like a UN flag, but instead of the UN symbol in the back, it's the crying face of a child because uh, he did this for the inauguration of the International Year of the Child, uh, which we were able to get him appointed uh, premier of the, world, of the Year of the Child over, over there. So it's a, it's, it's a fascinating, we actually had an office inside the UN, and that's the plaque for our office up there called Muhammad Ali Art Foundation for Peace. So we had a lot of things going that were uh, tragically interrupted by the Holmes fight. The kind of relationship we had was basically fun. It was just everything we did we had fun at and we, we enjoyed it. And one of his habits was making uh, these paper airplanes because he painted jets a lot. It was one of his favorite subjects. But he also made them in the form of paper airplanes and he would sign them and date them and throw them at me. And so I managed to catch two of them and uh, they're on display here. Um, as unique examples of his, his fun stuff. In this case, we have a, a boxing glove uh, that, that he signed to me um, in the 80s. Down below, this is the pair of boxing gloves that are on the front cover of the uh, auction uh, catalog here. And they're the pair of gloves that he wore during that exhibition fight to raise money uh, to help the poor children's art school up in Boston and uh, he signed it uh, after the fight. Next, we have that famous issue number one of Avant Garde magazine that carried the artworks that we just saw over on the other wall. And here is something really unique. We have his palettes and brushes that he used to paint the paintings that are all over these walls. And, um, uh, and also his original tablet of, of art paper that he used to do uh, the drawings. And this easel is signed and dated Muhammad Ali, September 4, 1980. And these exact colors are in these exact paintings that we've just been looking at over here. Many years ago I was a, a member of the Heisman down at the downtown athletic club and we also had an annual boxing award as well as a football award. It was in the form of a, a gold medal and so in 1984, Muhammad Ali was our champion for life. And this is a program cover that he signed, um, 1984. And this is a copy of the medal, um, a, a rare piece of honorarium by one of the greatest sports organizations in the world, the Downtown Athletic Club. This is an interesting group. Uh, Ali was initially taught to paint by his father, who was an artist and a sign painter in Louisville. And these four paintings are by Muhammad Ali's father. And when I was down in Louisville one time, he took me to visit both his father and his mother. Uh, they were separated or divorced actually back then, and he had bought a house for each one of them. And so I was able to buy these from um, Muhammad Ali's father. But they're, they're, they're beautiful pieces. They were very well done. And this one in the corner is very unique. This is actually a photograph on canvas of a photograph that I took inside of Cassius Clay Sr.'s house. And this is a painting that he was doing of Muhammad Ali's mother. So it's the only known painting by Cassius Clay's father uh, of Cassius Clay's, then Cassius Clay's mother. And it's an absolutely unique uh, piece, and she was a wonderful woman. And you can see the, by the expression on her face, it just shows her goodness. This is an interesting item. This is actually lot number one in the entire uh, auction. And it's a poster uh, by another artist uh, showing Muhammad Ali. Um, and the poster was given out uh, at the charity fight where I first uh, met him up in Boston. So Ali had a, a bunch of these posters up in the hotel room. And so he autographed uh, this one um, with a very beautiful saying that was one of his, his real themes in life. And it says, service to others is the rent we pay for our room here on earth. Muhammad Ali, January 30, 1977. And that really sums up his character, he was a very generous, generous person, um, and peace and love were often on, on many of his, uh, 
his signed uh, pieces. Before we say goodbye, um, I just want to show you this rare pennant from Muhammad Ali's boxing camp in Deer Lake, uh, Pennsylvania, which is where he trained for a lot of his heavyweight uh, fights. And I was uh, honored to have it. And I hope you've enjoyed seeing the exhibition. Uh, and uh, adios, and have a, a, a great day. So before we leave, just tell them on October 5th is the auction. Do you want to inform our audience uh, how what they do to look at all this? Well, and They can uh, call Bonhams and um, sign right up over the phone uh, with a credit card where all of the usual invaluables and other uh, uh, internet auction sites are also carrying the auction. So, uh, if you if if you love Muhammad Ali and uh, want to participate and uh, take something sacred home, uh, there's 101 different ways you can do it. And what's that favorite saying? Float like a butterfly and sting like a bee. <laughs> and I'm Crystal Hart, reporting on Muhammad Ali and, and all of his, his wonderful artwork here at Bonham's uh, auction, auction House in New York City, Madison Avenue, 56th Street. Thank you. Thank you. Night-night. Thanks for watching. Hope you've enjoyed the show.